joining me today. What's that all about? Uh, um, so today it's, uh, it's finally that time that I have um, been waiting for to get this story together, uh, the battle over LA. I know it's not recent or anything like that, but honestly, it's a part of history that is actually pretty significant if you think about it. This happened in 1942, and it was before Roswell, before all the kind of beginning hoopla of flying saucers and sightings and all that stuff. But World War II was the big, the big distraction at that at this time. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do my best. Sophia from Golden Girls. Hopefully somebody out there watches Golden Girls as much as I do, because I mean I'm only gonna be 48 soon. Not a, you know 108, but still she's a she's like vintage and awesome and a classic. So anyway, picture it. <laughs> it's February 25th, 1942, 2:30 a.m. Air raid. Have you ever heard an air raid? I have never heard an air raid in my lifetime. I have not heard an air raid. Um, that was going off. LA was ordered to black out, meaning all lights down, nothing on it whatsoever, and to prepare for an attack. Okay? Searchlights sprang to life and were focused solely on one singular object in the sky. And I'm going to show you this picture. I'm probably going to pop it up a couple of times because it's um, really the picture of this whole entire event. And it's really the only one that they had that I have that's worth anything to look at. Um, but there it is. And holy crap. I mean, honest to God, you can see that in the picture, there are all these other little lights. Now, who's to say if those are other, like multiple objects or one object, multiple lights, who knows? I digress. Now, people were scattered throughout the streets. People had stopped in their cars. People had gotten out of their homes. So everybody's outside, okay? Everybody's doing the same exact thing. They are looking up at the sky with terror. Okay, all weaponry was fixed on this object, and then all weaponry began to fire. The Battle of Los Angeles had begun. Now, after the December 7th Pearl Harbor attack, the whole West Coast was on edge. They were terrified on a daily basis because Harry Stitton, the Secretary of War, had said American cities should be prepared for attacks from the enemy forces. Germany, Japan. Now, blackouts and nightly curfews were common from Alaska down to San Diego. And it was like a rolling thing. It was, it was not unusual at this time. Now, there were rumors um, of Japanese battle groups invading the coast that was probably one of the most terrifying um, fears for civilians, but also civilians were, um, the military as well, were afraid that the Japanese were somehow going to infiltrate the United States from within, okay? That's, that's a terrifying thought, but if you think about it now, I mean, look at terrorists. I mean, they live among us and we didn't know back on 9-11, they were learning how to fly. Anyway, on the morning of February 23rd, an I-17 Japanese submarine had stopped off the coast of Santa Barbara, okay? It surfaced, fired 25 explosive shells at one oil field, and then slipped right back beneath the sea, disappeared. That's enough, get your pants. Now, the United States um, West Coast was uh, very vulnerable too. They were extraordinarily vulnerable at this time. And on February 24th, just after 1.30 in the morning, a radar station picked up a strange object over the, in the sky over the Pacific, and it was only 200 miles away from LA, okay? By 2 a.m., two more radar stations had confirmed the object, and it was moving fast and deliberate, and it was now only 120 miles from the coast. Now, it was huge and headed directly for the city, and it was reported to look like there was roughly 25 planes 
flying at 12,000 feet, all right? And it was just off the coast of Santa Monica now and just a few miles from LA. So you can just, I mean, civilians didn't even know what was going on. You know, this is the story after the fact. Can you even fathom the terror? Anyway, um, anti-aircraft bat uh, batteries were loaded, spun up to aim at the sky, and they were ordered to shoot on sight. As soon as it was seen, shoot. Well, suddenly the object vanished from radar, but visual sightings were pouring into police stations all over the city. And some reports were saying it was one large ship, then other reports were saying it was like several. They, they could see a bunch of other ships. I think, I think the number that they came up with was anywhere between two and six, they were saying they saw. Now, it was sketchy. It was all coming in scattered. People were so panicked. And I think there was that hysteria mentality where, um, you know, a, a mass of people can see the same thing. And it's like, uh, it's a terror. It's triggered by terror and it's triggered by hysteria. It's, it's a crazy phenomenon, but it's very real. Now at 3.15 a.m., the 37th Coast Artillery Brigade saw, they claimed they saw six planes. And for the next hour, anti-aircraft explosions lit up the night sky, okay? And it was like, sightings continued. The object turned south and disappeared off of Long Beach, disappeared. At 4.14 a.m., the all clear was declared. Now, while there were no serious injuries reported from the shootout part of it, there were five deaths reported, two from heart attack, from fear, fear-induced heart attacks, and three from car accidents from the hysteria of the blackout, okay? Now, there wasn't one single piece of downed aircraft that could be found anywhere. So it begs the question, what in the good hells were we shooting at? Seriously, I mean, you know, California has the most credible sightings uh, reports over the last 80 years, including this one. And even Project Blue Book, they investigate over 12,000 cases still to this day, including this sighting. Um, there are 701 cases that have never been explained. Now, Japanese claimed they only had the one submarine in the area and no planes. What the hell would they lie now for? Look what they had done to us at Pearl Harbor. So they weren't lying about that. Now, Frank Knox, the Secretary of the Navy said, the event was a false alarm. Oh, you'll love this. And that the ensuing reaction was war jitters. Needless to say, the army strenuously disagreed with his assessment. Strenuously, it sounds like few good men. I object. Noted. I strenuously object. <laughs> anyway, 37, excuse me, 37 military reports, one even from a colonel, confirmed seeing the planes over LA. And there was three separate, excuse me, um, radars that confirmed this. So it's not like this was a mystery of nothing being there. You see the picture, you see what these people were seeing. Oh my God. Over 1,440 rounds of ammunition were fired at this object. And like I said before, nothing was found. No artillery was found, like not other than bullets, spent shells. That's what was found, but not, not any other downed craps of any kind. So then comes the cover-ups. Ah, the cover-ups. Who knew they started so far back? Now, with all, this was a major, Donald Kehoe said in his, um, quoted, with all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of these aircraft are going to prove to be of interplanetary origin. Then after three years of an investigation, he did declare that some of these were from outer space. That's a fact. So here we go. This photograph that I'm showing you yet again, it's from the LA Times, okay? The picture was said to have been doctored, yet 
yet. There was um, no negative for it. And to boot, not one person from the LA, no, no reporters from the LA Times claimed responsibility for it. So no one from the newspaper um, took responsibility for taking the picture. In fact, no one has ever taken responsibility for taking this picture. Probably one of the biggest, most historical photos of all time and no one ever came forward to say, yeah, yeah, that was me. I mean, how, how is that possible? I, I, I don't know how that's possible. Then there was a memo between Roosevelt, FDR, and George Marshall that referenced two craft being shot down that were not earthly. But of course that was denied by the government. Of course it was. Now, two days after the battle over LA, FDR wrote a memo where he speaks about atomic secrets being learned from study of celestial devices and material in possession of the army that had great significance toward the development of a super weapon of war. Celestial devices? What the hell's a celestial device? Hmm? You and I both know what a celestial device is. Now, in February of 1944, uh, th this is how they this is how they worded it a double secret classified previously unknown committee on non-terrestrial science and technology said in quote non-terrestrial know-how in atomic energy must be used in perfecting super weapons of war to affect the complete defeat of Germany and Japan okay FDR also said we should take every advantage of such wonders that have come to us. The reality is that our planet is not the only one harboring intelligent life in the universe. No shit. No shit. Back in 1944, the president was saying this, not Eisenhower, which is when kind of, you know, the rumors of him meeting with um, an alien race in a hangar at Wrights-Patterson, Air Force Base, but FDR knew a hell of a lot more than he ever let on about the alien presence and the phenomenon. I mean, holy shit. Now, at the same time, Eisenhower was over commanding um, uh, in World War II, and he was dealing with seeing Foo Fighters. So, I mean, this all was actually very much on the radar for the military. So, unbeknownst to if not all American civilian, they don't know, they didn't know anything about this. Roswell was really like the first introduction that most people, lay people like me, I mean, obviously I wasn't alive then, but still people like me who just, you know, you hear of, of, of the Roswell crash and that just sends everything into a tizzy. But this part of the country, the West Coast, legitimately got thrown in way before everybody else did. So... I don't know what the hell happened. I, I can't, I, I never really knew that there was so much involved and that FDR had so much awareness, so much in fact, that it's finally, I mean, the memo's finally coming out like 80 years later. Are you serious? Like, come on people. Not that I'm surprised. I'm never surprised at that kind of shit, but I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something because, um, it's kind of a fascinating kickoff in history. Like, holy shit, this is kind of, I fl it's like the jumping off point. And it's where all the cover-ups kind of were born, it seems like, for us. Um, so anyway, until next time. <laughs> I hope you're staying happy and healthy. And uh, stay weird. And take care. Thanks. <laughs>